In this episode, we're going to be talking about the Barony of Letnev, a uh, really interesting race with no stop. So the Barony of Letnev, uh, they live underground, uh, they're highly aggressive, and they seem to have been a slave race to the Lazic Empire millennia ago. After two unsuccessful rebellions uh, during the downfall of the Lazic Empire, they were eventually able to gain their independence. However, despite their high aggression and readiness for war, they didn't have enough resources. So what they do is, uh, from their underground caves and their starless planets, they trade uh, weapons and mercenaries uh, for food. Uh, so they don't have a lot to work with other than their arms and armament, which interestingly plays itself into how you should play them. So looking at the Barony of Letnib's faction abilities, uh, the Mutinous Reserves, at the start of each round of space combat, you may spend two trade goods, you may re-roll any number of your dice during that combat round. That seems like a great ability, the only problem is you have to get those trade goods somehow, which is very, very tough. However, you can get them through force because their second faction ability, Armada. The maximum number of non-fighter ships you can have in each system is equal to two more than the number of tokens in your fleet pool. So, you can use this uh, to get more actions per turn without costing your fleet, which is really nice. Their technologies, uh, they start with anti mess deflectors and plasma scoring, very good for an aggressive race. Their specific faction technology is the L4 disruptors, during an invasion, units cannot use space cannon against your units. It is a one uh, yellow tech, which is pretty reasonable. And then non-Euclidean shielding, when one of your use, units uses sustained damage, cancels two hits instead of one. That's just like, you soak up damage. So with this race, uh, you're going to be hitting a lot of combat. Especially if you use your flagship that has a bar bar up there. <laughs> has a bombardment of uh, 5 at 3, which is amazing, and a base attack at 5 at 2, which is insane. Not that much movement, it can only move 1, and its capacity is only 3, so you're not carrying an army with you. But other players in that system cannot use planetary shield, and this, at the start of each combat, this flagship keeps repairing itself. So if you're even able to damage this flagship, it'll just come back. So that takes like four hits to kill the flagship at once. And on top of that, you as the Baron of Letnum get to say if those four hits happen or not to the flagship. So that's really impressive. Now let's, uh, I, I like to go over the expansions because I haven't really played them. I just like to do a quick reaction uh, before we get into how I would strategize with the Barony. So uh, their mech, deploy at the start of the ground combat, you may spend two resources to replace one of your infantry with one of your mech. Okay, that's pretty good. That's that's decent. And as a combat six, that's pretty okay. Uh, I don't see myself using the mechs all that much here, uh, especially with their cost uh, being just two. But I guess... I don't know. I, I, don't I don't really see the use of that mech, at least during most combats. Now for their leaders, their agent. At the start of space combat round, you may exhaust this card to choose one ship in the active system. That ship rolls one additional die during this combat. That's cool, because that seems like you can use that for yourself and for an ally. So overall, that seems like a great, great power. Uh, the commander, after one of your units uses sustained damage, you may gain one trade good. That's actually very good. And there's no, uh, there's no, no, like, exhaust this or purge this card. That's like, it's the same damage. Cool, I got, I got money. See, that, that is how you get, that's how you get the Barony's flagship, though. Like, you, you would want, you would need to make sure the uh, Barony player is greedy. Interesting. And then Dark Manor, 
dark matter affinity for the hero. Place this card near the game board as an action. The number of non-fighter ships you can have in this system is not lit have in a system. It's not just one system, it's in a system. It's not limited by the laws or, or by the number of command tokens in your fleet pool during this game round. At the end of the game round, purchase a card. That's very good. Not as good as the Arborek. I'm actually quite surprised. Uh, but if, like, say, uh, the Embers Muat have their death egg on Mechatol Rex and they've spent a lot on, like, cruisers and their flagship and they have a sustainable force there, and you can position two or three systems with fleets, play that card, boom, everybody jumps in, you own Mechatol. And you can start grinding away on those points. So, uh, for the Barony, my strategy would be try to ally myself with one player, uh, hopefully Hakan, or um, another player who's like getting really a lot of resources, if I can't, so, if, excuse me, if I can't get those, um, resources already from planets I've taken over, make sure they're funding me, and then I'm their spear or their sword, and I'm attacking who they want, as well as occasionally smacking a, smacking a few people around, and then wielding my big stick at the other players. Like, th this is a very, um, combat-focused, uh, faction. You, their, their dreadnoughts are, are absolutely powerful. Um, you would need to... I would say build as many dreadnoughts as you can and cruisers um, have a couple of carriers now by to drop uh, units off but for the most part it's getting that flagship and then getting sustained damage on on most of your on most of your fleet uh, that and then on top of that not having a lot in your fleet pool so that way you can uh, you can do a lot of actions early, and then later moving those actions to your fleet pool so you can just have a stupid amount of ships, uh, which, which would be interesting. The only problem I see is the commodities, because you don't have a lot to offer other than your combat. And in Twilight Imperium, I like to say it's not really a combat game, it's a, it's a trade game where combat is just a, you just threaten each other across the table. Uh, because if, if one ship is destroyed, like say a Dreadnought destroyed, that's four resources, that's a planet. That you have to spend again to get that one chip. So, Barony may not pick the Barony, but they are, they're, they're tough. They're tough. They're not to be messed with on the game board. Whoa.